All right, how's it going? We are talking about azimuths before and back azimuths and pace counts and how to plot a general route using a compass. Uh, one thing I want to touch on right now is called uh, range estimation, okay? And there's two ways of doing this. One is the estimation by eye, okay? That's where you look at something out there in the distance at your target point of where you want to be at on your directional line and you basically guess the distance. Okay, a simple way of doing this is visualize 100 yards or 100 meters in your head and then look at that object and then double or triple or quadruple that distance until you reach that object. We do this every single day. You know, how far away are those mountains? You know, how far away is Burger King? You know, things like that. Okay, you see something coming over the horizon, oh, how far is that? You do this without realizing what it's called, okay, but it's range estimation by eye, okay? And it's quite simple. Again, visualize 100 yards or 100 meter distance in your head and then look at your object where, where you want to be at or, or what you're looking at. And then just, you know, like I said, double or triple or quadruple it and just keep on going from there until you get a general idea of, oh, that's 800 yards away. Or that's, you know, 900 yards away or 400 meters away. Okay, that's quite simple. That's estimation by eye. Okay, man, again, we all do it. Okay, the second one I want to get into is the five degree method, okay? Five degree, okay? Now, I say degree doesn't mean, oh, it's degrees outside, okay? How hot is it? No, it's degrees on your compass, okay? We're all, everything we've done so far is compass. We haven't even gotten into maps and none of that. It's all just compasses, okay? Universal item is a compass. Everybody seems to have one, okay? So, what do I mean by five degree method, okay? Let's look over here on the board. And there's your five degree method right there. Okay. Now, what I want to do here is simplify this as best as I can. You have your target point, TP, okay? And we'll say down here we have a start point, okay? There's our starting point, okay, right there. All we're going to do is shoot an azimuth, which we already learned how to do, to our target point. And you'll get a number, right? A directional line, azimuth, you get a number. How many degrees is that? Okay. Let's say we're going to shoot 20 degree azimuth. Okay. Quite simple. All you do then is you walk in a 90 degree angle. It doesn't matter which way you go. Okay. You just walk in a 90 degree angle from your start point and your target point. Okay and you walk until there's a five degree difference from 20 degrees. So let's say plus or minus five degrees. Minus five degrees from 20 is what? 15. Plus five degrees from 20 is what? 25. So if you're, it doesn't matter which direction, again, where you're walking, let's say we're walking and now we have a 20, 20, 25 degrees right here. Here's 25. So 25 is five degrees more, right? Okay. So that's where we'd stop at. We stop right here. Okay? We're five degrees difference. All you do then is walk back to your start point, counting your paces. Now don't get that confused with a pace count. Okay? You're not doing a pace count every other foot or whatever you're doing. No. This is counting the paces. So every time your left foot touches, left, right, left, right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, all the way back to your start point. This number could be in the hundreds. The number could be 20. The number could be 500. It doesn't matter. Keep track of your paces and take full length steps. Again, this is going to vary if, if an adult does it, you know, or versus a child. If somebody who's obese and has, you know, walking issues or you're walking with a cane or you have crutches or you're really tall or really short, okay? But try and take full length steps. The reason why is because this answer you get here is going to be in meters, okay? So you want to try and take a full 36 or 40 inch step, that way you get close to the meter as you can. Okay, so again, you walk back to the start point, counting your paces, okay? Not taking the pace count, counting your paces. Whatever number you get, by the time you reach your start point, let's say we hit 40, okay? 40 steps to get back to our start point, okay? You take that number, multiply it by 11, okay? It's quite simple. What's the answer? 440, okay? 
So you, what you just did was you got an approximation, and I call it approximation because, like I said, again, there's too many factors. Am I tall? Am I short? Am I obese? Am I skinny? Do I have a disability? It's going to be a different number, but you're going to be close. Okay. So the distance between your start point and your target point is roughly 440 meters. That's range estimation using the five degree method. Okay. Is this 100% accurate? No. Unless you got some kind of range finder or whatever, or GPS where you can just punch it in, you're not going to be accurate, but you'd be close. It's a good guess, okay? And it will, you, know, you can judge your distance to that lake or to that cabin doing this, okay? Now keep in mind, you know, there's going to be some factors in this, okay? What are they, okay? Other than the obvious, like I've already mentioned, if you have a disability or you have crutches or you're overweight, or you're underweight, or you're a runner, okay? You have long legs, short legs, one leg's longer than the other, okay? And you're not, I'm taking a full 40 inch step, you're taking a 36. Other than that, keep in mind the object that you're shooting to, if it's a freaking mountain, you know, and it's 25 miles away, and you do this method, you're gonna be walking that line for a five degree offset for a long time, okay? You're not gonna get an answer of 440 meters. You're gonna get a number like this, in the meters, you'll divide by 1600 and it'll give you however X amount of miles that is, okay? So keep in mind, you want short distances to that barn, and you know, you get to that barn, then you shoot an azimuth again, or you get to that lake, you know, something you can see off in the distance, visually, that's realistic, okay? So the factors are gonna be the person's body type and the object you're shooting to is the number here. But hopefully we're not gonna, you know, we're not doing that. This can be used for, you see, you know, people who hunt, you got deer grazing out there by a salt lick or something, or there's people out there or whatever. You can actually come to that location and get a generalized idea by shooting an azimuth to that salt lick and then doing your 90 degrees walking off and shoot another one until your five degree offset. And you can gauge, oh, that's 700 yards or 700 meters from my location. And I can dial myself in, I can just sit there. You know, things like this is what you, the practical use of this, other than just plotting points with a compass and walking around. Okay, if you're trying to evade capture or you don't want to be around people, you know, you can see, well, I can see a thousand yards that way. Well, how do I know it's a thousand yards or a thousand meters? Things like this. Okay, so again, let me go this one more time really quick. Simplified version. Okay. Five degree method. You shoot an azimuth to your target point. You walk in a 90 degree offset from your starting point, either direction until your five degrees difference. How do you know your five degrees? You shoot one more azimuth to your target point until your five degrees difference. Turn around, walk back to your start point, counting your paces, not a pace count, okay? You wanna know what a pace count is? Look at my other video. Counting your paces, take your number of paces, multiply by 11, get your answer in meters. And that's the closest guess that you're gonna get without range finders, okay? So again, this has been range estimation, estimation by eye, and the five degree method.